हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सुरेश अग्रवाल्स मैथमेटिक्स शॉर्टकट्स सो यू हैव सीन टू डिफरेंट वीडियोस इन विच आई हैव टोल्ड यू हाउ टू लोकेट प्राइम नंबर्स बिटवीन वन एंड टू हंड्रेड एंड देन आई आल्सो टोल्ड यू अबाउट सम ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ प्राइम नंबर्स डिविजिबिलिटी बाई ट्वेंटी फोर इफ यू रिमेंबर एंड आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सटेंड दैट नाउ एंड extension in the sense that i'll be taking up some strange uh, names which are given to some special kind of prime numbers and i'll take up one more uh, different property uh, of primes so was the entire video this is something very useful and uh, very good for mathematics lovers all over the globe so friends the first thing i would like to tell you is strange names you know when we talk about strange names the names themselves are not strange but the properties are strange you must already have heard about the twin primes so the primes they can also be twins and twin primes are the numbers which differ by 2 like you have the numbers uh, say 11 and 13 so you can see they are consecutive odd numbers and they both of them are prime and they differ by 2 can you name some more uh, pairs of such prime numbers which differ by 2 we have 17 and 19 this is also a pair of twin primes and likewise if you uh, proceed further then 21 23 25 27 29 31 29 and 31 this is yet another pair and likewise if you carry on finding so many you will find so many different pairs of twin prime numbers so very common concept and i think most of the school students they study this co uh, the twin prime numbers likewise you have the term co prime numbers so the co prime numbers are the numbers whose highest common factor is 1 so they these numbers are often confused with prime numbers but they may not be prime like if i take an example of say 8 and 15 both of them are not prime because 8 is divisible by 2 and 15 is divisible by 3 5 and so on and so they are not prime but if we consider both of them the highest common factor between 8 and 15 is 1 because 8 is divisible by 2 only so 2 times 2 times 2 and 15 is divisible by 3 and 5 so there is no common factor between them so the highest common factor of 8 and 15 is 1 and therefore this pair of numbers is known as a coprime pair of numbers so you should avoid that confusion coprime numbers are not prime numbers they have no common factor that means the highest common factor is just 1 so that is one more uh, amazing thing about primes then next up we have a, a strange name here mersenne primes if you see this name i may be pronouncing it wrongly but you can check on google what are mersenne primes now again it has to obey some property right and mersenne primes also obey one such property so any prime number of the form 2 raised to power p minus 1 any prime number which is in this form 2 raised to power p minus 1 where this number p is also prime p is also prime is called a mersenne prime like let's take an example if i take p as 2 so 2 square minus 1 how much will that be 4 minus 1 3 and 3 is again a prime number so here also you should have a prime number and when you calculate this you should get a prime number as the answer likewise you can take so many different examples of mersenne primes if you put 3 3 is also a prime number right and 2 cube is 8 8 minus 1 is 7 and 7 is also a prime number so 3 7 all these are mersenne primes you can take uh, 5 also like 2 raised to power 5 32 -1 so 31 is also mersenne prime you can try so many different uh, things 
see two, three, five. They are consecutive primes, and everything is uh, getting me a Mersenne prime. But it doesn't mean that every number will give me a Mersenne prime number. So you can try experiment this, and I'm sure you are going to be amazed, you know, by the results which you will get. Then we have something called Sophie Germain numbers. So these are Sophie Germain primes. So another different property, another different uh, name given to the prime numbers. So what is the property which is to be obeyed here? Now we need a prime p such that two p plus one is also prime. Is also prime. Any prime number which can be written in the form two p plus one and where p is also a prime number that is called a Sophie Jervais prime. Now what's the example? Let's take the example of twenty three. How do we write twenty three in this form? It is two times eleven twenty two plus one. See, this eleven is a prime number, and when you put eleven in two p plus one, it is getting me another prime number, right? So this eleven is called a Sophie Germain prime. Likewise, you can try some more combinations. I think fifty three also works here. If I take fifty three here, I will get. Uh, this is 106 plus 107, and 107 is again a prime number. So you can go on and on and try some more combinations. I think 41 also works. Uh, if you see, 41 is two times 41 plus one is 82 plus one, 83, which is again prime number. So all these numbers which I am writing in the bracket now, they are Sophie Germain primes. Likewise, very uh, uh, you know related to this concept. Is the concept of the safe primes, safe primes. Now, how do you, uh, you know, actually uh, define these safe primes? Is how you define Sophie Germain primes. So this is the prime number, right? And here we have the Sophie Germain prime. The other side, this will be a safe prime. So if you want to define it, it will be a uh, Prime number p, where p this is p right? So p minus one upon two will also be prime. P such that p minus one upon two this is also a prime number. Then we will call p as a safe prime. Now there are lot of things to understand, a lot of things to enjoy. You know, when you start getting into a topic, you realize there are so many different angles and so many different concepts. Which we still don't know. Most of the students, most of the uh, people who are preparing for competitive exams, they just know that prime numbers are the numbers which have only two factors: the one and the number itself. And they know a series of prime numbers: two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, and so on. At most, what they study is they know that okay, the prime numbers uh, follow some definite patterns, and uh, um, uh, what are the various prime numbers? Less than fifty, or some of them will uh, know numbers less than hundred also. Right, that's it. But it's a big topic actually, and there are so many different concepts which we are still, uh, you know, unaware of. So let's take another one now. This is really really important. This is a very very important property of prime numbers, and I'll try to prove it in front of you in this video. Okay. So the property states that whenever you have a prime number. p suppose p is a prime number then p square the square of the prime number reduced by 1 this will also will always be divisible by is always divisible by 24 now i'm going to prove this why square of a prime number minus 1 is always divisible by 24 or it is a multiple of 24 so for understanding this let's try and uh, factorize this p square minus 1 so we all know that p square minus 1 can be factorized as p square minus 1 square that is p plus 1 and p minus 1 right so there are two factors remember p is a prime number here okay now first thing i'm going to do is to 
plot it on a on a number line maybe so this is p this is one less than p p minus 1 and this is one more than p p plus 1 now we know that except 2 which is the smallest prime number and it's the only even number which is prime this p is not even right it is not even so 4 6 8 and they cannot be even because they are all divisible by 2 now when this number is not even that means it is odd one less than the odd number is going to be even and one more than the odd number is also going to be even so p minus 1 and p plus 1 actually are consecutive even numbers and whenever you have two consecutive even numbers if one of them is divisible only by 2 then the next one will be divisible by 4 right just think you have number 12 and 14 See, this is divisible by four, and this is divisible by two. You take any other pair, say thirty and thirty-two. Thirty is divisible by two, but not by four. But this is divisible by four. So consecutive even numbers. If one of them is divisible by two, then the other one will be divisible by four. Correct. Now, out of p minus one. If I assume that p minus one is divisible by two, it can be the other way around also. If this is, if this is divisible by four, then this will be divisible by two. Okay, so you can take both cases. It works both ways. So if p minus one is divisible by two, then this one p plus one will be divisible by four. Correct. And from these two, what will happen if I multiply these? P minus one into P plus one. It will be multi uh, multiplied. It will be a multiple of rather two times four, eight. So it is divisible by eight. Does that work? And does that make sense? Just take some examples, and you will understand why P minus one into P plus one is always divisible by eight. And therefore, this product is obtained from this, right? So P square minus one is actually divisible by eight, so eight times something, right? Now this is the first thing I wanted to obtain. Now let's do the same thing again. I'll plot it on the number line here. P P minus one P plus one, right? Apart from the number three, which is the smallest uh, uh, multiple of three, which is a prime number, right? This p is not divisible by three. Not divisible by three because it's a prime number, right? Not divisible by three. Just think, if a number is not divisible by three, its predecessor or successor, one of them will surely be divisible by three. Can you take an example? Let's try not divisible by three. So let's take ten. Prior to this, we have nine, and after this, we have eleven. See, nine is divisible by three. If you take a number like say twenty, then nineteen and twenty-one. Now, see, nineteen is not divisible by three, but twenty-one is divisible by three. So, one of the one of the numbers, the predecessor or the successor, will always be divisible by three, right? So, either p minus one. Or p plus one will be divisible by three, and so even if one of them is divisible by three, their product p minus one times p plus one will be divisible by three. Correct, and so p square minus one is three times something. Right, it is divisible by three. Now look at that. Two results which I got here. I got p square minus one is eight times something, and p square minus one is three times and something. So obviously, if something is divisible by eight and three both, then p square minus one is actually divisible by eight times three, twenty-four, and therefore p square minus one is always a multiple of twenty-four. 
So everything has a logic. You can see uh, I have taken two cases. In first case, I proved that p square minus one is a multiple of eight, and in the second case, I proved that p square minus one is a multiple of three, and so it is a multiple of twenty-four. So any prime number, if you square that up and subtract one from it, it will always lie in the table of twenty-four. Can you take an example? Let's take p as eleven. If p is eleven, then what is p square minus one? It is eleven square minus one. That is one twenty one minus one one twenty, and that is twenty four times five. So it is divisible by twenty four. So friends, the numbers are amazing. You know, you keep on getting into a particular concept, and uh, you know you will find that the knowledge is endless. And you keep on doing it, keep on uh, researching. You get new things, and uh, that's what uh, makes mathematics so beautiful. So friends, if you like this video of uh, prime numbers, some special names given to prime numbers, and one amazing property of prime numbers, then do share it with all the maths lovers so that they can also enjoy it. Do subscribe the channel if you have not done till now, and uh, do not forget to click the bell-shaped icon. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and all the best for your practice.